Marley taking through the stories people are talking about and sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Hashtag AMLO, meet Mexico's new president. The transformation we will lead will consist of getting rid of corruption in our country. A new female razor causes a mild stir by showing female body hair in its advertising. The top 25 internet influencers reviewed and rated by Time magazine will show you who. And a wedding day to remember this couple celebrate getting hitched and Russia making the quarterfinals of the World Cup. At the top of our news feed is AMLO. That's Andrea Manuel Lopez Obrador. He's the new president of Mexico. He takes over a country struggling with out of control drug cartels and less than friendly relations with its neighbors to the north. Here's what you need to know about the new man in charge. <laughs> I call on all Mexicans to reconciliation and to set aside our personal interests, as legitimate as they are, for the betterment of all. The transformation we will lead will consist of getting rid of corruption in our country. And AMLO has been congratulated by presidents in the region. This from Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela. He says, let the broad avenues of sovereignty and friendship of our peoples be open. Truth triumphs over lies, and the hope of the great homeland is renewed. You got this from Evo Morales of Bolivia, who tweets, we are sure that your government will write a new page in the history of Latin American dignity and sovereignty. And President Trump of the United States sent his congrats, and that there is much to be done that will benefit both the US and Mexico. No mention of that wall, though. Let's take a look at what else has been trending on social media. And LeBron James's name is trending. It's been announced that he'll be joining the LA Lakers from next season. He's got a huge new contract too, and the news has been greeted with shock by many online. Reports suggest it's down to the ex-LA Lakers and basketball legend Magic Johnson to sign off the deal. And LeBron's move was welcomed by another sportsman trying to make it in La La Land, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He wrote, now LA has a god and a king. Zlatan welcomes King James. Now, this is said to be mobile phone footage of the moments after a film-like jailbreak from a prison near Paris. Redouin Faid was serving 25 years for the murder of a police officer when a helicopter landed in the prison yard. Armed men jumped out and sprung him from the slammer. He's now on the run again. He busted out of jail in 2013 using explosives. Like, I'm so glad you're out here doing something positive. You should not be getting the police called on you because you're out here cutting grass. Yes, I'm going live because I'm so angry right now. Me. Well, this is the Facebook Live of a woman in Ohio who asked a 12-year-old boy to mow her lawn. He did so, but accidentally cut the grass on a neighbor's property. And that neighbor then called the police on a 12-year-old cutting the grass. It's being viewed as the latest example of black people having the police called on them while performing seemingly innocuous activities. This goes in there with barbecuing while black and sleeping while black. We now have mowing the lawn while black. Now, Newsfeed's favourite Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has appeared in her first online video since her baby was born. And Karen, I'm doing really, really great, thank you. I promise, I was going to waiting for anyone to say that I look tired. I promise I'm not too bad, I actually just don't have any makeup on, so that's why. 
probably have a bit more bags under the eyes than usual. Um, but uh, we're doing great. We're doing now she's been given the details of her government's plan to give every family with a baby $60 a week for the first year of the baby's life. It's part of New Zealand's welfare reform bill. Now, Mr Dern, who's on maternity leave, made the announcement, as you can see, from her couch while holding a newborn. And she did a Facebook Live. Now, a new female razor has been launched in the US and its ad is causing a bit of a stir. This is it. It's made by a company called Billy and it's said to be the first time that women's body hair has actually been shown in an ad for razors. It's 2018, but apparently the world is only now able to deal with the fact that women have hair on their bodies and they sometimes choose to shave it. And there's been some reaction to this ad. This Instagram post is from the producer. She wrote about how police years that the ads aired in Times Square. This tweet is from someone called Jamie Lee, who says she's very pleased with the ad writing, finally a women's razor that embraces body hair. Thank you, Billy. And this one says she's so impressed with the Billy Razor advert. Responsible, contemporary, and cool, focusing on the normality of body hair and highlighting the choice that women can make uh, despite societal pressures. Now, the attack on a young journalist in India has revealed the racism some people from the northeast of that country face on a regular basis. The seven states in that part of the nation border Myanmar. Now, people there look different, but India has more than a billion people. The question is, are the Indian government doing enough to deal with it? Murder, rape, molestation, verbal abuse. Is racism becoming a new normal in India? She called me a chinky, uh, pulled my hair, and uh, scratched my face, my hands. I don't think uh, it would be wrong to call it a hate crime. It wasn't a regular Monday morning for Mumbai-based journalist Ushnata Paul. As heavy rains lashed the city, Paul headed to work in an Uber pool car. Paul says a co-passenger, a woman, began to unleash racial slurs on her over an argument about the first drop-off. I was physically attacked, there were bruises still on my face. All I could feel from the way she attacked me was that she probably has some uh, hidden grudge uh, against people from the northeast. Police are investigating the alleged hate crime which left Paul terrified and psychologically scarred. Racism, especially against Northeasterners, is a long-standing issue in India. Many from the area flock to different parts of the country in search of work and better education. Some end up being treated as outsiders and humiliated. In 2014, Nidor Tanyan's gruesome killing brought Northeasterners out on the streets in protest. In January 2017, a chilling video surfaced of two Northeastern youngsters being assaulted People from the region complain of being racially stereotyped and discriminated against because of their colour, looks, language and food. And because of their East Asian features, they are commonly referred to as chinky. Maybe because we look different than the rest of the mainland Indians, but that doesn't mean that we are not Indians. We come under India. We are patriotic about our country. In May this year, Keko Tiamko from the country's northeast composed a quirky song with lyrics that took a dig at racism. I'm an Indian, I'm a true Indian, Indian. This after many of his friends complained about racism. My idea was to spread it even more so that the mainland India could listen to this song, not only the victims of racism from Northeast India. The Indian government has recently set up a panel to address the racial discrimination faced by Northeastern people. Dr. Alana Golme, herself from the region, says though these incidents are reported, people neither take a stand nor speak up openly on the issue. The policymakers deny that racism exists in India and refuse to amend the anti racial war, something that victims are determined to change. I just want everyone to know that you cannot normalize racism anymore. That time's up. All right, let's go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Monday. The search is still on for a missing youth football team and their coach in Thailand. It's been over a week since the team were last seen for going on a hike in Chiang Rai. They became trapped in a cave complex after heavy rain. Now the water is only just starting to recede, so a search of the caves could be fully completed. But there is more heavy rain forecast for Wednesday. Rescue crews have a narrow and closing window to get the 12 players and their coach out of the caves. 
Now, a poster that went up in Adelaide in Australia was widely mocked by those that saw it. This is it, and it appears to be from the University of Adelaide. It shows a guy, as you can see, talking to five women while they just listen on intently. Now, people have been asking if the uni is now offering courses in mansplaining. The uni say it's not their pitch and was put up by the company who are working to renovate the building that the hoarding covers. Facebook has again had to admit it shared its users' data with third-party customers without its users' consent. Facebook has previously owned up to sharing people's data with companies like AOL, but said they stopped the arrangement back in May 2015. Now that wasn't strictly true as they've now had to admit to giving these same companies an extension to continue accessing people's data for another six months. The social networks say that all these arrangements will come to an end by the end of this month. The American magazine at Time has published a list of the 25 most influential internet people. It has those you expect, those you didn't, and those who are not people at all. Watch this. Time magazine has listed the 25 most influential people on the internet. And they're from all over the world. Naomi Watanabe is a Japanese actress and comedian with 8 million Instagram followers. 27-year-old Australian Kayla Itzinis has built a fitness empire earning $74 million annually. And South Korea's BTS was the first K-pop band to debut at number one on the US Billboard chart. There's even one person who's not a person at all. Lil McClella is a fictional avatar with 1.2 million followers on Instagram. Now, a list like this wouldn't be complete without obvious inclusions. Donald Trump, Kanye West, Rihanna and Kylie Jenner. But there are also some lesser known people, including the women of the Philippines calling out President Duterte's sexism, the Parkland school shooting survivors who are campaigning for stricter gun control in the United States, and the Saudi Arabian activist Eman El Nafjan, who, despite a successful campaign to allow women to drive, remains locked up, labelled a traitor by Saudi leaders. YouTubers Logan and Jake Paul also made the list, despite recent controversies. Together, they have 33 million subscribers. While fashion bloggers Diet Prada thrive on creating controversy, calling out fashion industry copycats. And the list's youngest inclusion is six-year-old Ryan, whose toy reviews earn him and his parents $11 million a year. And now for some good news around the refugee crisis on the US southern border. Now after President Donald Trump brought in a policy of separating children from their parents, there have been some shocking stories emerging. But let's bring you one that has a happy ending. Now, this seven-year-old was taken from her mother two months ago. They met again at Miami airport. Buena Ventura Martin Godinez is from Guatemala. Her daughter, Jane, was taken from her at the US-Mexican border and taken to Michigan. That's in the Midwest United States. Her mother has been in Miami. <laughs> Esta ley aquí está muy duro, eh, la gente no tiene corazón porque se para Porque un hijo es, es un gran tesoro que uno tiene en la vida. Y que al separarnos eh, duele bastante porque los hijos son la bendición de Dios. And last up today, we want to show you a wedding party in Russia as it celebrated not only the marriage, but also the country's win on penalties in the World Cup yesterday. Now, the wedding of Dmitry and Yakaterina Vasilev was being held in St. Petersburg, but no one was really paying any attention to the nuptials as all eyes were on the match. Now, it went into extra time and was a real nail biter. This is the moment when Russia won. What a great wedding gift. a lot from the Newsbeat team. Reach out to us with your questions, comments, complaints and suggestions. I'm at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on Twitter, YouTube and Facebook. Follow, subscribe and add. See you again tomorrow.